The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans, High Stick NT, and the Manitoba Pulse and Soybean Pro. Bernard Tobin here for realagriculture.com coming to today from uh, Ridgetown College. Uh, more specifically, the offices of Dr. David Hooker. Thanks for having us, Dave. Uh, thanks. Welcome, Bernard. Hey, let's talk a little bit about soybeans and specifically uh, a little bit more about rotations. A lot of talk this year of a lot of a lot of soybean acres, obviously, and farmers going, you know, second, third year soybeans. What are you hearing? Yeah, I've been hearing this uh, quite commonly this year and also it was quite a common thing last year as well. So Ontario last year we had, for the first time ever, over 3 million acres of soybeans in Ontario last year. Just a tremendous acreage for soybeans and we were around 2.3 million acres of corn and just under 1 million acres of wheat last year. For this year, we're thinking of about the same numbers because we're all hopeful of a great fall last year. A lot of farmers were hoping to get a lot of wheat in, but unfortunately, as myself, I didn't get as much wheat in as I wanted to, and so unfortunately, some of those acres might have to go back into soybeans again, or maybe into another crop such as corn. Mm. Now, when you talk about um, rotations, you always say, hey, corn, soy, wheat, get diversity in the rotation. Obviously, that's not going to happen, but that's what you'll want. Yeah, exactly. So we have extremely strong data. Very strong data and also from Bill Dean's group at Guelph and, and also from some of my other counterparts in the U.S. as well. Very strong effects due to a diversified rotation effect, especially on corn and soybean yields. Mm -hmm. And so we can't look at the yield of one crop in just one single year because a crop actually has impact on all the other crops in the rotation in subsequent years. So we need to not only plan for this year, but we need to also kind of characterize the impact of our decisions on following years as well. So then let's talk a little bit about that the impact of going second, third year soybeans, continuous soybeans. What's that going to do to a number of things, whether it's, it's yield, whether it's rotation, and, and the overall impact? Okay, so the we don't have data in, uh, in at Ridgetown here in my program at least on on the yield impact of soybeans in the first year, or in the first year of continuous soybeans and the second year of continuous or third year of continuous soybeans. We don't have that specific data, but I do have data from Wisconsin that they've uh, looked at that effect, and I'll show you that data in a second. But what I want you to show want to show you is data or data that we have on uh, continuous soybeans. Mm -hmm. After um, 15, 20 years of continuous soybeans, what are soybean yields like in that kind of system versus a system where we have a corn-soybean rotation or a corn-soybean wheat rotation, okay? So this is some of the data that we have from Ridgetown uh, for the past five years or so, and we have a no-till comparison. This is long-term tillage rotation data versus a conventional till type system. And so this is the continuous soybean yield data and across the last five years we have 56 bushel to the acre in conventional tillage. But when we have a diverse rotation in the conventional system, our soybean yields go up by 10 bushel to the acre, which in the soybean yield is huge. Like where other, what other input can generate 10 bushel to the acre more soybeans, right? It doesn't cost, no fungicide can do that usually, typically. No fertilizer can usually pr produce that kind of a response. This is a true tillage response, and this is a long-term type tillage response. And I'll talk to more about the shorter type responses a little bit later on. But as you can see, in the conventional till system, we're looking at a 10 bushel yield hit between a diverse rotation and continuous soybeans. And even from a corn-soybean rotation, we have about a three or four bushel decline with a continuous soybean versus a corn-soybean rotation. But when you can contrast this with a no-till type system, we have only seven bushel difference between the um, a diverse rotation and continuous soybean. And the real thing to highlight here is the difference between continuous soybean and a no-till versus continuous soybean in the conventional till. 
So all these letters here are, are separating out differences within each TILA system, so you can't compare. We don't have the statistical analysis here on this screen to compare this side with this tillage versus this side, but just comparing the no-till continuous soybeans, 61 bushel per acre average, versus the conventional till continuous soybeans at 56 bushel. So five bushel to the acre less with conventional soybeans um, versus no-till, and that is attributed to all the tillage, all that destructive tillage that we're doing in the conventional system. Combine that with the low amount of biomass that the soybeans produce, a low amount of root systems compared to uh, a wheat crop, compared to a soybean crop, and we combine that with intensive tillage, that's why we see a depressed soybean yield here, mainly because of lower soil quality. And in the no-till, we don't see, um, we tend not to see those extreme effects. So from that, Dave, what, what, do you, what do you tell farmers based on that? Is it, if you're going to push, you know, longer continuous, it's better to do it no-till than conventional? Yes, no-till, so soybeans, the more soybeans um, that are grown in the rotation. So in this one corn, soybean, wheat rotation, we only grow soybeans one year out of three corn soybean only one year out of two and this was continuous soybeans so as you can see as the frequency of soybeans increases in a rotation it's really cut, cutting back on our soybean yield or holding back mm -hmm. and that is holds true for no-till and conventional till system but it seems to be more dramatic of an impact in the conventional till and that is because of the impact that tillage has on soil quality Okay. And so, uh, Dr. Joe Lohr from, Lohr from uh, University of Wisconsin, he looked at the impact of soybeans two years in a row versus three years in a row and four years in a row. And I'll just show you this next slide here. So, these soybean yields are all relative to continuous soybeans. So, this is in another long-term trial at University of Wisconsin. And this is a soybean yield from like a continuous type system that we saw similar to what we have here in Ridgetown and so these soybeans continuous system 41 bushel to the acre so this is their first year soybean so this would be like a corn soybean rotation we have yields 49 bushel to the acre and then the second year of soybeans after soybeans our yields are reduced by four bushel to the acre or about 10 percent and this is kind of the golden rule in terms of um, the rotation effect. So whenever a crop is followed by itself, we can expect about a 10% cut in that yield potential. And that holds true for corn, that holds true for soybeans, and in wheat, um, it is probably a little bit more than 10%, but it holds true, that rule of thumb holds true for a lot of crops, and it holds true especially uh, for soybeans in this in this example here as well, so the more or the in, the more our crops increase or, or their frequency does in the rotation, these yields start to stabilize, and so the biggest impact on the yield potential comes from the first year where we follow one crop from another, and then those yields eventually stabilize into a into a continuous soybean um, uh, yield platform right here where. Yields are only different from one percent in a five year after five five years of continuous soybeans, from two percent with four years of continuous soybeans, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that percentage yield reduction is a little bit less as we get more into continuous practice. So I guess the takeaway today is, hey, if you're going to do continuous soys, try it in no-till. And the other thing, as you pointed out here, you can expect to drop off, but it's probably going to level out a little bit after the third year, right? That's right. Exactly. Exactly. But, but in general, a lot of growers are concerned about soybean yields plateauing, okay? And so those soybean yields are usually plateauing in areas where they, did, they do grow a lot of soybeans, have a long history of soybeans. And so we have to do as much as possible to get out of soybeans especially on areas where we, or reduce the frequency of soybeans, especially in areas where there's been a long history of soybeans grown in that rotation. And it's largely due to the impact on soil quality. Hey Dave, great, some great insights today. Uh, a lot of farmers looking to make some decisions in the very near future and uh, I'm sure they'll be watching. Absolutely. Thanks, Bernard. Thank you. Thanks.